the purpose of the bill is to amend the Basic Conditions of Employment Act, which is a critical piece of legislation, uh, labor legislation in South Africa, which sets the minimum terms and conditions of employment for employees. And the Basic Conditions of Employment uh, Amendment Bill is going to make some changes to both those minimum terms and conditions of employment, as well as some general changes which are required for the labor broking and temporary employment services changes, which we'll find in the Labor Relations Act, as well as the Employment Equity Act. One of the first changes which is going to be brought about by the amendment bill is changes to the equalization of benefits for fixed term employees, which requires that the benefits provided to fixed term employees are going to be the same as those provided to permanent employees. And practically this can have a number of consequences uh, such as fixed term employees now having to be provided with either medical aid or pension fund or retirement benefits, whereas those schemes which are third party schemes may not actually allow or entitle fixed term employees to become members of those schemes. So one of the second amendments brought about by the amendment bill is that employers will not be entitled to accept a payment or require a payment from an employee or a prospective employee or require a employee or prospective employee to purchase any goods from the employer. One of the next changes which is of importance is that the uh, Department of Labor and the Minister may set a sectoral determination and may in that sectoral determination set the level of representation which is required by a registered trade union to obtain organizational rights within that particular industry. It's often been an issue of contention as to whether or not an employee has got a right to refer a labor dispute exclusively to the labor court, alternatively to the high court or any other court with concurrent jurisdiction. One of the critical changes also brought about by the Amendment Act, which is in line with the changes made to the Labor Relations Act as well as the Employment Equity Act, is to repeal Section 82 of the BCA in its entirety, which replicated the definition and uh, provisions related to temporary employment services. As we can see when the Employment Services Bill comes in and now starts to regulate that, all other references to labour broking or temporary employment services in subsidiary legislation have been removed. The Employment Equity Act is a piece of legislation which focuses both on some specific topics for labour law um, as well as some, some general obligations of an employer. And generally then the Employment Equity Act will deal with the obligations of a class of employers known as designated employers and what their obligations are in that regard in particular to submit uh, employment equity reporting documentation to the Department of Labour. Currently the Employment Equity Act prohibits unfair discrimination in respect of employees as well as prospective employees on certain stipulated grounds which would include things like uh, sex, the political beliefs, the family responsibilities, uh, the cultural background or political opinions of the employee or prospective employee and those protections have always been in place but there have been additional changes to the definition of what may constitute unfair discrimination to now specifically and particularly include that unfair discrimination can be committed against an employee if there is unequal payment uh, or the provision of terms and conditions of employment between employees. The effect which this might have on the labor industry generally is both in regards to labor broking employees in as far as a labor broking employee who is placed with a client may have different terms and conditions of employment uh, not only with his own fellow employees who are employed by the labor broker but as well as with employees who are employed by the client and depending on the way in which the definitions of employer and employee for the purposes of all of these employment legislation is interpreted, it may be that a labor broker employee is able to claim unfair discrimination if he is provided with different terms and conditions of employment than those which are provided to employees of the client at which he's placed. Uh, at present, in terms of the Employment Equity Act, there's a particular class of employers known as designated employers. Uh, and uh, an employer can be a designated employer if it employs more than 50 employees, alternatively if it exceeds a total annual turnover threshold which is set for the particular industry within which that employer falls. And currently there are certain reporting obligations in respect of those designated employers. At the moment there is a distinction between an employer which employs more than 50 but less than 150 employees and those 
large scale employers which employ more than 150 employees. The major difference between those two is that the employment equity reporting obligations are annual for an employer which has more than 150 employees and are every two years for an employer with between 50 and 150 employees. The proposed amendments to the Employment Equity Act will remove that distinction and will create a situation in which any employer which employs more than 50 employees or is over the total annual turnover threshold for its industry will be a designated employer and will have to submit its reporting documentation on an annual basis. Uh, at present there are fines and penalties which can be levied against a designated employer if it fails to comply with its reporting obligations which at present range from between 500,000 Rand to 900,000 Rand depending on the number of previous contraventions. There's a significant change to the penalty and non-compliance structure of the Employment Equity Act insofar as the penalties will now be based on the total annual turnover of the designated employer and can range from 2% of turnover for a first non-compliance up to 10% of total annual turnover.